My dear loyal brothers, Firstly, God willing, it is a good thing that Tahiri has gone to Istanbul. It occurred to me that the extraordinary divine grace and assistance that were apparent when, in Barla, I performed all the duties connected with the composition and correction of the rhythm pieces, and now this is to be observed in Husserl and his helpers as he carries out so many texts to the full. Secondly, Tahiri is unforgettable, sincere service while in Denizli prison, and his unshakable loyalty to the Risale Nur, unerring intelligence, and unassailable courage, which have accorded him a high position in the Nur circle, have led us to include his last letter in the additional letters in its entirety. I send my greetings firstly to his mother, Zubayda, and Nur students, and to his wife and all his relatives. May Almighty God be pleased with them forever. Amen. Thirdly, since Ahmed Qureshi, a member of the Quraysh tribe from Nice, together with his respected father and cousin, is one of the select publishers and students of the Risale Nur, his fine versified pieces about the Risale Nur have been added to the additional letters in the name of the students of that area. Fourthly, there are some outstanding brothers in the town of Eirdir, but I cannot write their names. I received a letter from our hard-working and serious brother Chilingir Ali, which referred to them and to Mehmet Sabri, the main powerhouse, which was well phrased and carefully written in a script that resembled Sabri's. As he wished, we added it as it is to the additional letters and we congratulate himself and the person who is getting him to write, and wish them both success. My dear, loyal, magnanimous, old and new brother Yeshil Salih, the matters you asked about my biography will here be indicated very briefly and succinctly. God willing, at a later date others will reply in more explanatory fashion. But I neither want nor do I deserve to pass into history and to show my unimportant self to coming generations among the religious scholars of this century. I offer unending thanks to Almighty God that He did not make me fond of myself and showed me my awesome faults. Moreover, it is fame seeking to make oneself known to people and may lead to egotism, self advertisement, and hypocrisy. This is excessively harmful for the likes of us. Also, since I have been compelled to this age to live on my own both physically and mentally, and to withdraw from social life, certainly I do not have the right to mount history among those who pass their lives in society or to appear to the people of the future. There is only this, that the superlative benefits for this country a nation of the Risale Nur have been proud through by the anonymous decisions of courts of law and committees of experts. Considering this, I can point out a few matters in reply to your questions, but in the name of the Risale Nur, which belongs to the Quran alone and bears its meaning, not in the name of my unimportant, wretched, unfortunate, and very foul to self. Later, the Risale Nur and its students may elucidate these matters. Firstly, the late Abdurrahman wrote my biography 30 years ago and had it printed. Secondly, your questions would be answered in detail by such parts of the Risale Nur as the defense speeches of Eskshir prison, which are a sort of biography of the period the Risale Nur was emerging and were made the 27th flesh, and the defenses of Denizli prison, which are the 11th and 12th race together with the treatise for the elderly, the 26th flesh, the 4th ray, the 16th letter, the 6 attacks, and the 3 indications, and the 7 signs, the 7th part of the 28th letter. I do not now have them with me, although the court returned them to me, but I shall have. God willing, I shall never forget you. Your concern for me in this plight has elevated my severe difficulties. May God be pleased with you. Amen. My dear loyal brothers, an unfortunate sensitive man who suffers from scruples and has relations with the irreligious saw a hadith about the famous supplication of the Prophet upon whom be blessings and peace, the Jevshan al-Kabir, 
and its inordinate merits and value, and he fell into doubt. He said, It's narrated from the Imams of the Prophets upon whom the blessings and peace family, but it appears to be greatly exaggerated. For instance, it says that the supplication yields as many rewards as the Quran, and the great angels in the skies descend from the divine throne when they see someone reading it and bow before him in all humility. But this is contrary to reason and logic. He sought assistance from the Salih Nur. So I gave him an answer from the Quran, the Jayshan, and the Salih Nur that was completely certain and in accord with reason and wisdom. Here I am writing an abbreviated summary of it. It was like this. I said to him, Firstly, the third branch of the 23rd word sets out 10 principles which demolish such doubts and dispel them. Take a look at it and find the answer. Secondly, Muhammad Zat Ahmediye, upon whom the blessings and peace, who every day receives the merits of the good deeds of all his community and assists in the happiness of each of its members, and who manifested the greatest name, was the original seed of the cosmos and its most perfect and comprehensive fruit. He saw the supreme degree of that supplication referring to himself and heard it from the angel Gabriel, upon whom be peace, who informed him of it and compared others to himself or was compared. That is to say, that extraordinary merit occurred to the supplication from the supreme sanctuary of Muhammad, upon whom be blessings and peace. The merit is not universal and general, rather, the substance of the supplication holds such extraordinary value, and by following that being upon whom be blessings and peace, who manifested the greatest name, such merits may be possible for others. However, there are a number of crucial conditions, it is not enough just to recite it, for it would spoil the balance of the precepts and damage obligatory acts. Thirdly, just as the supplication is exempt from exaggeration and is literally true when one looks to Muhammad upon whom be blessings and peace, so too when one looks to the reality of the hundreds of divine names in the supplication, it is possible that the merit proceeds from their infinite manifestations. The truthful bringer of news upon whom be blessings and peace spoke of a very small part in order to show the infinitude of the potential emanations and left it vague and absolute for encouragement. Then, with the passage of time that potential and absolute matter came to be seen as actual and universal. Fourthly, in the twentieth flesh, about sincerity, there is a footnote about a person who is given a paradise with the breadth of 500 years. Take a look at it and you will see that his being given that vast paradise does not mean he is given ownership of it in a way we do not understand. For just as a person's house belongs to him in many different ways and he owns it, so through his numerous senses he owns in a sort of way the things on the face of the earth and has disposal over them and can benefit from them. He can say, the huge earth is my house. It was given to me, and the sun is my lamp. That is to say, some merits and rewards that appear extraordinary and irrational look to this truth. Furthermore, in Islam, Muhammad upon whom the blessings and peace is the primary response of all the meritorious and virtuous actions of Muslims, and he receives a mountain's worth of merit and reward from one of our prayers, for which we receive only an atom's worth. His private invocations and supplications make plain the highest rank accorded him in connection with his sentiment, in his private conversations, not in connection with the Sharia and his messengership. By mentioning these points, he was encouraging his select heirs who follow him to the letter. I declared, none knows the unseen have God, and God alone has knowledge of this. Praise be to God, the man who was beset by doubts and scruples was saved from them and gained complete certainty. I am sending this with the thought that it might be useful for some of you. Endless greetings to you all. This piece is somewhat confidential. It is for the select students alone. My dear loyal brothers, 
I always used to wonder why. Although it should have been people from the religious schools who embraced their Salinur more than anyone, it has been those of them who have assumed official duties that have held themselves most aloof from it. It is now necessary to explain a small part of the answer that occurred to me. Firstly, because covert dissemblers have used certain people in high places against us and conducted intense propaganda officially, the officials have been perturbed and compelled to keep their distance. The Hojas from among them who are egotistical, suspicious and have embraced the innovations started to be even cooler towards us and to seek pretexts and excuses. And because the seven signs from the Salih Nur deals first slaps at the innovators, and in the odd Erjuze in the eighth and eighteenth flashes, Imam Ali, may God be pleased with him, deals awesome blows at the misguided ulama, and the piece in the twenty-eighth letter about Wahhabism, which is in one respect and to an extent conducive to innovations, deals a blow at those who have secretly embraced it, and the Risaleinur deals fierce slaps at the translator of the Qur'an, and those who permit the Qur'an's translation to be recited in place of it, and the Hojas who think of their needs and livelihoods and their social standing, and even some of the Istanbul Hojas who are old friends, began to await us and a few of them to try to criticize us even. On account of extreme Wahhabism and its enmity towards the prophets upon whom the blessings and peace family and Imam Ali, they even began to object to the Risale Nur's being a spiritual gift and work of the prophets upon whom the blessings and peace family and Imam Ali. But we are not indignant at the Istanbul scholars. In a way we are pleased because compared with others they do not bother us. More than this, for the sake of fair-minded, esteemed, deceased persons like the late Fetva Emine Ali Rıza, Ahmet Shirani, Şevket Efendi and Mehmet Akif, who greatly appreciated and applauded the Risale-i Nur, we consider ourselves to be friends of the Istanbul Hocas and are not offended by them. God willing, the 28th flesh on sincerity will be given to them to read sometime, which will turn the old friends into new ones. My brothers, not everyone can be as staunch as you are. Certain hojas are being used to covertly break the nurture's moral, so don't be deceived or shaken. Don't argue with them, and as far as you can, behave in a friendly way. We are your brothers, say, and don't forget the points made in this note lest they mislead you. Hatice and Rabia the new Nur students who entered the fold of the Risale Nur through Hisraf's efforts and wrote me a letter have been included among the select students. They are working enthusiastically at the lessons of the Risale Nur in Barla, with which I am closely concerned, through the efforts of Bahri and his children, and Ayyub, Ali, Mehmet, and Suleiman made me weep for joy. I send endless greetings to all the people of Barla especially the Suleymans, and Bahri, and the Mehmeds, and Mustafas, and Shamla Hafiz Tefik, who performed such valuable services for their Salainur in earlier years, and blessed Hafiz Alit, and Imam Hakkı Efendi, and Muhajir Hafiz Ahmed, and his children, and grandchildren, and Shem'i, and Abdullah Çavuş who assisted me greatly, and all my neighbors there, men and women, and I pray for them and request their prayers during these blessed three months. I have just heard that Bahri and his children have written out three copies of the Staff of Moses. They may pass to the account of Muhajir Hafiz Ahmed and our other brothers in Barla. And the serious, sincere letters of Kazım and the Berber Mehmet have won the right to be included in the additional letters. While Bahri's fine verses may pass to the account of his small nurse school. It is an astonishing and subtle instance of divine grace that I try to forget Abrahman's death on its being imparted to my heart that Mustafa the Elder, may God have mercy on him, would, with his loyalty, pen, and power, serve the Risale Nur as the late Abdurrahman had. In truth, with his pen, Küçük Ali affirmed exactly that reminder from the unseen. He took over his brother's pen and transformed an old yellow knife into a diamond sword. 
That is to say, I discerned him too in blessed Mustafa's spirit. Also, with my heart, I discerned Muhajir Hafiz Ahmed, the Risale-Nur's first student and devoted publisher, by virtue of his loyalty and attachment to myself and the Risale-Nur. He did not manage to serve it with his pen, but subsequently, his son Kazim, son-in-law Bahri, and his other son-in-law, the Berber Mehmet, started to work with extraordinary devotion and loyalty and to perform fully and steadfastly the service I had felt and hoped from him. His grandchildren even joined the innocent young students. I send my greetings to all. Said Nursi In his name be he glorified. May God's peace, mercy and blessings be upon you. My dear, loyal, blessed, dutiful, active, steadfast brothers. Firstly, we again congratulate you on the month of Recep and night of Regaib, and in response to the congratulations of our brothers in Safranbolu, we congratulate them on the three months and the four blessed nights as well as their most serious concern for the Saleh Nur. I wanted to change the titles and praise accorded my person in the letter of congratulation written in the name of the students there to refer to the Risale Nur the same way that we modified some of Halil Ibrahim's letters. I was going to include it in the additional letters, but since it so explicitly refers to my person, I could not manage it, so for now it has been left aside. My brothers, you should know certainly that I shrink from fame and renown, self-advertisement, self-dependence, and seeking the good opinion of others, I flee from them and I take no pleasure in praise and acclaim. Only in so far as they are signs of loyalty to the Risale Nur and of suffusing with it, I accept some excessive epithets and either for the sake of certain people or not to offend them, I alter them a little and keep silent. However, the two flashes on sincerity and the principles of our way, that is, friendship, sincerity, and brotherhood, do not permit praise of this sort. Moreover, in this age of egotism and selfishness, fame may damage the unalloyed pride of the Risale Nur in the eyes of fame seekers. Secondly, the staff of Moses, guide for youth, and short words written by Hufsu's two innocent children filled me with joy. What wonders God has built! Thousands of innocent nurtured children like them will illuminate the future. Said Nursi In his name be he glorified. May God's peace, mercy and blessings be upon you. My dear loyal brothers, God willing, during these three blessed months, abundant sacred wealth will be added to the Nurja's spiritual partnership. Each of them will win profit as though working with thousands of tons and hundreds of pens. Fortunate indeed are those working with pens at the Zulfikar collection these fruitful months, which may count it as worship in five ways. However, it is absolutely essential that attention is paid to accuracy rather than just writing. Today, I saw two meaningful coincidences and I realized that in return for the difficulties I am suffering these days in correcting the staff of Moses, Divine Providence is giving me recompense and rations in pleasing fashion. One of them. Every day I was eating two or three of the sweets the heroic Tahiri had brought as a courtesy and extraordinarily they never came to an end. I was astonished. Today. As was my habit, I was going to take two when I saw there were only two left, so economizing I took only one of them. That very hour, in a box beneath the copies of those two innocent children had written out their sweets just like Tahiris made of sugar and bread and the same amount. While enjoying this sweet coincidence, yesterday at the same time, I was very thirsty and was drinking a lot of water. I had a yearning for stewed plums. I did not know and had forgotten that long ago I often used to assuage my thirst with plums. I had an intense desire for some. Then suddenly I was given some in a box together with some sugar from the Nurju Sherife Hanım, a close friend of Asiye. For the sake of this truly sweet coincidence, I accepted a hundred times over both the children's gifts 
and theirs. Thousands of greetings to you all. Said Nursi. My dear, loyal, unshakable, indefatigable, constant, steadfast brothers. Firstly, I declare to those who say that the struggle for livelihood this summer and the worship performed these three months may cause some slackness in the writing out of the Risale Nur. On the contrary, it will encourage the writing and it should do so. For serving the Risale Nur, both Egmont's through its blessings means of support and peace of heart, and since it is worship in the form of reflective thought, it augments the rewards of the blessed months. Secondly, one of the Nur students said to me, you said last year before the copies of the Risale Nur had been handed over to us, and as a result of some copies being returned privately, through which Divine Mercy had shown itself to a degree, that if and when the Risale Nur is read and written completely freely, and it is returned to us, Divine Mercy will be manifested fully with the coming of rain. Thus. I feel quite certain that the unprecedented mercy this spring is a consequence of the staff of Moses now being written out and read everywhere in earnest, and Zulfikar too is being copied enthusiastically. My dear loyal brothers, firstly, heroic Rishti, who with his rev is one spirit in two bodies, and together with his courageous brother holds a key position in the service of the Risale Nur is trying to get hold of a remarkable machine for that service, which marks the commencement of new conquest of the Risale Nur. God willing, it will continue to be printed and published by Nurjus with worthy hands like pens, without needing strangers and the unworthy. But before everything, it should be written for the duplicating machine correctly and without errors, if possible firstly by hand in the old letters and later on the typewriter in the new ones. That would be best. I leave it to your discretion and good judgment. Secondly, I have seen the letter Konyal Sabri wrote Refet, and I understood from it that like the other Sabri, this Sabri is a truly sincere, devoted, and hard-working Nurju. May God's blessings be upon him and upon the religious scholars of Konya who have encouraged and motivated him and have vindicated the Hojas. I send many greetings to them and foremost the esteemed exegetist Hoja Vehbi and to the nurse students there, and I request their prayers this blessed three months. The enduring one, he is the enduring one, Said Nursi. My dear loyal brothers, the late Muhajir Hafiz Ahmed together with his children and family served me loyally for eight years worked earnestly at the Risale Nur together with his children, grandchildren, wife, and sons-in-law, and took all his sermons and teaching from the Risale Nur. As his will and testament looking to this world, ten minutes before his death, he requested Shamlu Hafiz to complete the pieces he was writing out. Two days earlier, he had written me a letter sensing as a wonder of loyalty that just at that very time I was writing to you my preference for Sava over Barla and wish to be buried in the Sava graveyard. In response to me and objecting, he wrote in his letter, Why although you call Barla your second home, don't you come here and why do you prefer other places? Barla is the first Nur Medrese, your grave ought to be there. Two days later, before my letter had reached you, Muhajir Hafiz Ahmed's letter reached me, which gave Shamlu Hafiz news of his death on its second page. His departure from this world shook me severely, like Abdurrahman's, and made we weep and declare, We belong to God, and to Him is our return. May endless mercy descend on His spirit. Amin. May His grave be a dwelling for the Quran and Risale Nur, like his house. Amin. I have no doubt that this clear wonder resulting from his loyalty proves that the Nurjus will enter the grave in a state of belief and will manifest happy deaths. Convey my condolences to his relations and tell them that I am assigning him a share of all my prayers. Secondly, our brother Rafat wrote to me saying that there is much need in Istanbul for the Risale Nur and that everyone there needs it as they need bread and that Yeshil Shamseddin, who 
is one of our brothers and takes much interest in the Risale Nur and has read it and is an Urdu, derives his sermons and instruction which are attended by large numbers of people from its truths. Rafat also says that it is understood from the above that the Risale Nur is necessary every day for this nation, like bread. He also gave some of its treatises to people in high places, and he asks me for a copy of Zulfikar which I myself have corrected. I send my greetings to each and every one of you and offer prayers for you and request that you pray for me. The Enduring One, He is the Enduring One, Said Nursi. We congratulate Husserl on the correcting, distribution, organization and communications and on the publication and comments of the Risale Nur and we pray for his success. And despite all these crucial tasks, we see his fine and shining pens writing in many copies. And we understood from his letter that he writes copies of single treatises too. I suddenly thought just now of the Sava students of the Nur school, Haji Hafiz Mehmet, the late Hafiz Mehmet, and his brothers, and the Mehmets, and Ahmeds, and the innocent Nurju children, and the blessed elderly, and the other heroes. I felt a desire to be near there all my life and to be buried in its graveyards after I died. Suddenly, it was imparted to me that it is certainly useful in many ways to be physically present in Sparta province, the center of the Madrides Zehra, but by virtue of the way of the Risale Nur and the Nurjus custom, you are always together. Time and space cannot conceal this. Wherever you are, in east or west, north or south, in this world or the inner realm, you may be deemed together in spirit in a council. The Nurjus spiritual aid constantly reaches each other and you. I thought of this and it soothed me. I said, since everywhere now numerous powerful hands are stretched out to protect the Risale Nur and publish it, surely it won't be laziness if I rest up a little now. My dear loyal brothers, Firstly, we congratulate you on the blessed night of acquittal and the coming month of Ramadan. I was astonished to see a sign that for the Nurjus, the night of acquittal this year is going to be full of blessings and wonders. It was like this. Shortly before that night, while busy with correcting the staff of Moses, a pageant came to the window and looked at me. I asked it, have you brought some good news? It came in, and as though they were old friends, was not the least afraid and perched on the staff of Moses. It sat there for three hours. I gave it some bread and rice, but it did not eat then. It stayed there till the evening, then flew off and returned. On the night of acquittal, it stayed with me till morning. As I was lying down, it came to me, rubbed my head as though bidding me farewell, then flew off and disappeared. The second day, I was feeling sorry, then it reappeared. It stayed another night. That is to say, the blessed bird wanted to congratulate both the staff of Moses and the night of acquittal.